Whether you're a total beginner or a seasoned professional, Resolve can seem a little confusing and a little bit overwhelming. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through all its features, the workflow, and to do that, I'm gonna be showing you my own workflow for a typical video edit. So when you open up Resolve for the first time, this is the screen that you're gonna see and this is your project manager. This is where all your projects, all your timelines, and all your bins live. The main difference between Resolve and Premiere, starting off, um, if you're familiar with Premiere, you'll be familiar with its filing system. Resolve works off a database system. So instead of choosing an area for your projects to live, you'll have a database or a project library and you can have multiple different libraries for different projects. You can have one library for all your projects. It's totally up to you. But to start, you will need to create a new library. So to do that, add project library, you just name it, you choose the location, and you hit create. And that's if you're working solo. If you're working on a team, it's a little bit more complicated, but I'm not gonna get into that today. Now, I also recommend that you keep your library location somewhere local on your computer. If it's on a hard drive or an SSD, there's just a chance that it might fail and that would really suck. That would mean you would lose all your data. So it's best to just kind of keep it somewhere local. But while we're here, you can see you can connect to a network if you're trying to connect to one or to the cloud if you have Blackmagic Cloud. But to start, we're just gonna make a new project and to name it, I'm just gonna call it Resolve 101. Ooh, 101. Now we are officially inside Resolve and you might notice down the bottom here, we have a selection of icons. Each of these icons is the different stage of the edit that you're gonna to wanna to be in. So we have the media section here, we have a couple for editing, one for fusion or effects essentially, um, one for color grading, audio, and then also one for exporting. But the main one that you wanna start off with is this media page. Also, for the sake of this video, I'm only gonna be going through the media, the edit, the color, and the delivery page. If you're interested in Fairlight and Fusion, then I recommend checking out some other videos, because this one I'm just gonna keep very basic. So the media page is kind of where you get your projects started. It's where you import all your media, it's where you can create your bins, kind of get the organization of your project going. Kind of the place where you can set yourself up for success later on down the line when it comes to organization. So, you can come here, your new bin. Uh, if you're not familiar, a bin is basically just a folder for your edit. But I'm not actually gonna create any bins for this. I am going to import my own, which is something you can do. So I have a template here, and I'm gonna open this. So you can see in my bin, I already have a place for things like assets, which are my audio, images, video. I have a place for footage, and I have a place for the sequences. So let's actually pull in some footage and start going. So I've just dragged this footage in, but if you want, you can also go to your location, uh, find your drive, and then find the actual files in the drive through this system here. Once you've got all your footage inside, you can scroll through it, set your in points, out points, things like that very easily. That's the media page. That's where you get your project started. Let's move on to the edit page now. So this is the edit page. If you've used Premiere Pro or Final Cut, it might look a little familiar. If not, it might seem <laughs> pretty overwhelming, but it's actually quite simple. Basically, it's broken into a few different pieces here. You've got the media pool, which is the exact same as the media page. This is just where all your files live. Then you have the effects pool here and explains this is where you'll find all your effects. This is where you can go through, add your glows, beauty, any sort of effects they all live here. Transitions, where you want to create titles, uh, wherever you want to create things like color mats, they're all here. And if you have a few favorites, you can even add them to your favorite column right here. Over here, you have your timeline. This is where you actually build the edit. And then over here is your inspector. This is where you can change all the different parameters of a clip or an effect that you have applied. Say you want to actually change the crop of the thing, or I guess the position. You can use your zoom, you can change the position, 
the rotation, anchor point, it's all here. If you want to crop it, if you want to add a slight zoom, if you want to stabilize it, retime it, rescale it, it's all right there in the inspector. Now, if we close the inspector, you'll see we actually have two monitors now. This one on the left is your source monitor. This is if you're going through your media pool, this is where all that footage shows up. The monitor over on the right is the program monitor. That's everything that the timeline shows you. If you have your inspector open, it only shows you the program monitor. Now, if you have a bigger monitor or something, maybe you can have both at the same time. I have a 27 inch monitor here and it still only shows one, so you get used to it, it's personal preference. Now, say you want more space on your timeline or you wanna make room cause the edit's just looking a little crowded at the moment, you can toggle off all these different bins and you can have a much more stripped back kind of setup. You can even quickly export and um, you have an audio mixer that you can toggle on and off if you want to just affect the entire channel all at once. And you can even see Eclipse metadata right here from the edit page. And just like every other editing program, it's split into a video section and an audio section. You can add more tracks in the video or audio as you please. And just above the timeline, you'll see a kind of slew of icons, doodads, that kind of thing. I don't know the official name for these, but this is where you're able to kind of change the size of your timeline, or you can zoom in and out of it. Uh, you can change what the cursor does if you want to start cutting. Of course, there's also keyboard shortcuts for all of these. You can even choose whether or not the clips magnetize or stick to each other, or if you just want them to kind of flow. And you can even over here choose how you view the timeline. So if you have multiple timelines going on, you can stack them up like this. So you can kind of just flip through them or you can even change video height, audio height, whether or not you see waveforms, that kind of thing. So there is quite a deep level of customization available in Resolve, which is super handy. So that's the edit page. Again, you can make this as complex as you need to. Right now, I'm keeping things quite brief and giving you a broad overlook of what Resolve's layout is like. If you've been watching this video and you've been thinking, damn, I would love to be able to do these kind of cool transitions that Robin's doing or these cool text effects, well, I can tell you exactly how you can do it. And that is with Envato Market. You can find things like sound effects, web templates, stock video, fonts, effects, stock imagery, templates for either Premiere Pro, Final Cut, After Effects, or Resolve. So if you are an editor, graphic designer, or any kind of creative, you can access their entire library of assets. Thank you so much to Envato for sponsoring this video. I'm a huge fan. I suggest you go check them out. Go use the link in my description, and let's just get back to the video. This is the color page, and just like the edit page and the media page, it's broken up into different little sections here. You've got the program monitor. Again, this is just gonna be playing back your clip or your timeline. Uh, you have your clips here. This is where all the different clips would live. In fact, let me just bring in a few different clips. Over here in this section where you see primaries color wheels, this is the section where you will find most of Resolve's color tools. This is where you'll find your wheels to control lift, gamma, and gain, which basically just translates to shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you see here, I can start lifting that and you can see it gets brighter. Or I can bring that down and it gets darker. You can also control contrast, your tint, color temperature, saturation. They're all right here. Then you have the more kind of in-depth tools. You have your curves if you want to add contrast. You can start doing that. You have color warper, qualifier. There is so much in the Resolve color page that it could be a video in itself, if not a video series. So I'm gonna keep it super brief and just give you that broad overview. So over here, you'll find your scopes. And scopes are a way to visually measure things like exposure and saturation. So over here in your waveform, you'll see this is giving us an image of the exposure. So you're seeing over here, these highlights are this over there. All this area here is the bag. And if we swap over to the vector scope, then you can see where 
the actual colors lie on this spectrum. So red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. It makes sense that this is a green bag. It's leaning more in this direction. And over here, you will find the node tree. And you may wonder, what is a node tree? <laughs> well, unlike Premiere or Photoshop, Resolve doesn't use a layer-based coloring system. In fact, it uses nodes. And this is a very helpful and useful way to actually view and organize your color grades. So you can just add more by hitting Option S and you can start affecting these. Now, your nodes run from left to right, meaning that the nodes on the right are gonna be affected by the nodes on the left. So that's really gonna determine how you choose to organize your grades. So if something like contrast is in this node here, then that's gonna be affecting the node to the right of it. If you wanna add more contrast further down the line, then you don't wanna make this initial node too contrasty or else you're just gonna be affecting that contrast. Again, this is the kind of thing that deserves an entire video in itself. So if you want something like that, you can either let me know or check out one of the other dozens of creators that have made excellent videos about this exact subject. So next to the node tree is the effects tab. And this is a very similar list of effects as we saw in the edit page. But the difference being that you can actually control these effects to a much finer granular level. So if I were to add halation, I can go over here and there are a lot more settings that I can change in the color tab than I can in the effects tab. And if we look up here, we'll find another few toggles. You got the gallery toggle, and this is where all your stills will live. So if you generate any stills, then they appear here. Then you have your LUTs tab. Similarly, all your LUTs live right here. So if I were to just reset this node, bring it back to log, then I can go to the Panasonic node because I shot this on a Panasonic. Vlog to V709, and you'll see you get a preview in your program monitor. And then I can just drag that over and it's applied. Alternatively, I can also just double click and it'll go to the node that I have highlighted. So that is a very, very broad and general overview of the color tab. Again, I could just spend so much time going through each individual granular effect and tool but I don't wanna make this an hour long. So let's head to the last page for today, the delivery page. And this is the delivery tab, and this is where you will export all your projects. So similar enough, it's broken into your different sections. There is the program monitor view, which just shows you your timeline. You can see the individual clips that your edit's made up of. You can see the entire timeline that you're working with. And over here, you have your render settings. Now, what's cool about Resolve is that it has a bunch of presets that you can just choose. So you can make a H.264 master, H.265. You can just change it to ProRes. And you'll see here in the settings, they're all changing automatically. You can even do YouTube and choose everything there. Vimeo, Twitter. That might be X soon, even TikTok or presentations. It's, there's a bunch of different presets here that you can see that you can just go through and make the delivery process much simpler. But say you want to actually control what you're doing, let's go through the list and see what you can do. So you can have your file name, you can choose the location, you can choose to render out one single clip, as in it'll export out just one clip, i.e. a video, or you can choose to render out individual clips and it'll render out all of these clips separately. This is super handy for proxies if you're just trying to make really low quality versions of the clips that you're gonna edit with so that these high quality 4K, 422 versions aren't gonna slow your computer down, you can just render out a 720p proxy using the individual clip selection. Over here, you can choose video settings, audio settings, and file settings, things like name, suffix, subfolder. In your video settings, you can choose your format, so whatever you want. Codec, again, ProRes, 
DNX HD, H.264, resolution. Here's your list of resolutions you can use. You can even use a vertical resolution if you want. Frame rate, your quality. This is where you control the bit rate. You can either have it auto automatic and variable, or you can restrict it to a specific number if you want to try keep the quality or, or the file size down. And then you have things like encoding profiles, keyframes, pop into your advanced settings, and you can change the data burn-in. All these much more advanced settings, but gives you a lot of control in the delivery process. Now, I'll be honest, I've used maybe 10% of these settings when it, when it comes to exporting out a video. Really, I'm just looking at the format, the codec, the resolution, and the quality. That's it. I choose the location, obviously. I keep the name uh, the same as my project name, but really, that's it. Say you have all your settings ready to go, time to render, you just hit Add to Render Queue, and it appears. And then, if you want, you can just hit Render All, and your video's done. So that's it. I really hope this video has been helpful. I've been editing in Resolve for nearly five years now, on and off. I still edit in Premiere for my day job, but any sort of personal project I do, I use Resolve because I just prefer it so much. And it's come a long way in the last few years and has become just such a fulfilling editing system to use. So if this has made the difference to you on whether or not you're actually going to start using Resolve or not, or has helped you on your journey in any way, then please let me know. Hit like, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. My name is Robin. Thank you so much for checking out this far, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, thank God. I'm gonna turn the AC back on.